It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. We promised you ballet, and we're going to look at this incredible art form through a different lens this morning. And it is so South African. Joining us this morning is Dirk Badenhorst, who is the founder of the incredible Johannesburg based Mzanzi Ballet Company and the man behind the Gold Rhino of Mapum Gubwe Ballet Show coming to the Baxter Theatre this February and it's already blown people away up north. Let's give him a very good, feel good, warm welcome to the show. It's a Monday, so it takes a lot to get us up and moving. Um, but I would imagine you don't require a lot because there is a lot moving around you at the moment. Congratulations on what you've done with this incredible ballet up until now. I know the premiere in Pretoria was incredible for the show. And I, I'm speaking not just about the show, but the response. How do you feel when you get to these marks? Because we're about to start a new run. You need to know that this is going to land because so much goes into every one of these productions. When you get that kind of response from a premiere, how does that feel? Well, it feels like you have achieved your goals and it feels like you are building something that is truly worthwhile. And I think it's the bringing together. I always say to people, my skill is really, I'm not creative. I'm, I'm not the choreographer, I'm the one that has the ideas and then have to bring together a team. And the team in the end is what makes it happen. The team of dancers, the team of creatives, the team of marketing people, and I think that is what it makes it all about. And when you sit in the audience and you, and you have the old established ballet audience and the new young audience and they both really react so beautifully to this incredible new ballet, um, then you feel like you're on the right trajectory. And I think that that's important, is that for so many years we have done the Swan Lakes and the Giselles and the Nutcrackers and the Sleeping Beauty. And it has a place. It's all fantastic. It has and it's a, a wonderful, yeah. wonderful way to benchmark yourself. But it is time that we create something that is truly South African because the world is really waiting to see what we can come up with. And I keep on saying the, the, the true issue of ballet diplomacy comes into play with a ballet such as this. So we have Cubans, we have Chinese in this production, and it's then taking and working with the Russians, taking something that they have all done so well, and you bring it back to them, but adapt it into something that is now ours. And on our closing night of the, of the premiere run in, in Gauteng, I said, you know, up until now, ballet has spoken Russian, it's spoken English, it's spoken French and Danish, but now truly it speaks African. And I think this is what it's all about for me. It's really about taking two South African talents, such as the incredible design work of David Lale, Andrew oh, Burton sure. sets. Uh, Powerhouses. Incredible. Yeah. And then incredible businessman, Rule Corsa, that wrote the lyrics to his cousin brother, S.J. Corsa's music. That is just, again, a fantastic different angle. And then our, our musical team, to have something created in South Africa in 2023, 22, now in 24, it's incredible. Mark Chain put the whole thing together, but working with Matthijs van Dijk, Mpomori King, who can play more than 100 African instruments, and getting the sound that so many people go, oh, now I can see the instrument that I've only always heard. Yeah, or, or felt it. And Absolutely. I think we understand the relevance of this because you're going to need South African ballet dancers to be as inspired by the art form 20 years from now, and that's going to require a different jumping off point. A South African, an African point of Absolutely. departure completely. So well done for that. When you talk about the creation of these dance, when you tell a story through movement, that choreographer's role cannot be underplayed. When we talk about what Angela Reevy has contributed to, there's so much has to rest on that. Doesn't matter how pretty the dancers are, how amazing the costumes are, for centuries this ballet is gonna need to stand up. Talk us through the production itself. What do we get from the experience? So when I heard about Mapungupwe and the story of the gold rhino in 2019, and immediately knew this was the ballet that I've been waiting for 30 years. The first person that I spoke to was Angela and her husband, Michael, and they were immediately in. Sadly, Michael has left the company, and Angela became my almost co-director and then absolutely the main choreographer. We had some work done by Mdun Tlapu, but Angela really took to the story. We went to Mapungupwe, we spent time walking up the hill, really sitting for hours with a, a storyteller from Limpopo called Ntumbateka, sitting with the musicians, uh, sitting with Kolelwa uh, Kashe Katye, who had to ensure that we stuck to 
the actual story. We, we had, of course, a lot of artistic freedom to, to create some things, but to be very careful of cultural appropriation, do, do it justice, we had yeah. to ensure that we did all of that right. And then Angela taking the music and having what you used to have in the olden days where a Petipa and a Tchaikovsky could sit together and say, compose 30 bars of this, 14 bars of that. That's what we were able to do in this. And she was just so inspired by the story. And then creating something that, as you said, will have to stand the test of time. But the way that she's able to take the different layers and the story and, and to just blocks. bring it all together with the costumes, with the sets, with the props, um, telling a story that just appeals to the broadest South African audience and having choir, we have some uh, singers from the uh, State Theatre Youth Choir, having the dancers from Cuba, from South Africa, from China, having the youngsters that we have from our different groups, the two of the dancers that you will see, uh, Joshua was trained in Switzerland, um, Monica from the Zama group and now with the Waterfront Theatre School, bringing all of those together and really, really just building something that is, is so special to see. And I think this is what we, really want the Cape Tonians and the Western Cape audiences to know is that you will see something that you have not seen before. And it's the whole production value for the first time, we call it the Lion King of Ballet, well um, because it, it is such a broad experience on so, so many different levels. And that's really what we are trying to achieve. Oh, I cannot wait to get a taste of this. Thank you so much for bringing some of these incredible young dancers here. We're gonna keep this conversation going. What I love here is you start to feel that this is so much bigger than the sum of the parts. It speaks to culture, but most importantly, it speaks to this art form that is without a doubt the most magical way of of telling a story and now we get to tell our stories and of course you can plug into that directly we will bring you a performance in just a moment and we will keep all of the ticketing details up on all of our socials the gold rhino of martin gugwe ballet is coming to cape town it's going to be at the baxter this february and you don't have to wait that long because we've got performances coming your way on the other side of this <laughs> 